I learned every country in the world, and so can you. What's up guys, I'm Matt Shaver, and about a year ago, I decided that I wanted to learn every country in the world. Fast forward to today, and I can name every country in the world, every province in Canada, every state in Mexico, and the US, and all of our state capitals. Why did I do this? Well, for one, I think it makes it easier to understand and empathize with people from other places if you know where those places are. I also thought it'd be cool if at some point in the future I meet someone from a random country to know what that country is and where it is. I think that every person can and should learn every country on Earth. So today, I'm gonna take you through the process that I used to learn every country. If you're not familiar with Sporkle, it is a website with millions and millions of quizzes created by people from all over the world. This includes thousands of geography quizzes ranging from naming every country in the world to matching every country with their flag, which I definitely can't do. Now there are a lot of quiz websites and videos and other resources you can watch to learn the countries of the world. But when it comes down to learning the countries, spelling them, and knowing where they are on a map, I don't think there's anything better than Sporkle. I use Sporkle to test myself throughout my entire learning process, and I would suggest that you do the same. I'm going to be mentioning a lot of the Sporkle quizzes I use to learn every country, and all of them will be listed in the description below. Now, before you ever go on Sporkle, it is extremely important for you to schedule your practice. In fact, in my opinion, this is the most important thing you can do, not only when you're trying to learn every country, but when you're trying to learn any skill ever. Having time to practice scheduled consistently makes it so much easier to practice consistently. So when I set out to learn every country, I decided I was going to practice at noon on Wednesday for half an hour every week. Whatever it ends up being, pick a day or time or days or times that work for you consistently. These should be times when you have nothing else scheduled except for your practice. I would suggest picking a day and time when you are always available and usually not tired. If you keep a calendar, I would block it out on your calendar. And if you miss a practice session, you have to make it up. So again, I wasn't in a rush to learn every country, which is why I only practiced once a week for about half an hour or so. At this pace, it took me three to four months to learn them all. In hindsight, I think I could have learned them much more easily if I were to practice them three days a week. So I would recommend you do something like that. But whatever you choose to do, make sure that it is consistent and realistic. If you say you're gonna practice every single day for four hours, that's probably not gonna happen. I would say start small, and when you get in the habit of practicing, maybe increase the frequency. And I just wanna say again, I think this is the most important part of not just learning every country, but of learning any skill and building any habit. Now we're going to get into how I actually learned every country. I started by taking the countries of the world quiz on Sporkle once. I named every country I could, so I had a baseline number that I was starting from. I don't remember what it was like. I think maybe it was like 19 or 20 countries. It was not good considering there are 197 countries. Now learning every country at once would be very, very difficult. But fortunately, Sporkle has quizzes that break the world up into six different regions. North America, America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, and Oceania. These regional quizzes divide the world into chunks that are much easier to learn. So these are what I used. I started by learning all 23 countries of North America, but I would suggest you start by learning the countries near you since you're probably more familiar with them and it'll make things easier. But if you do want to start in the easiest way possible, South America is the easiest region with only 12 countries. Once you decide which region you want to start with, you just take the quiz over and over again. Take the quiz, see how many countries you get right, and then out of all the countries you miss, pick three to five of them to focus on learning for the next time you take the quiz. For example, in North America, I knew Canada, the US, and Mexico but that was about it. So I took the quiz and saw that the next three countries below Mexico were El Salvador, Guatemala, and Belize. So I focused on learning those three countries for the next time I took the quiz. Then once I could remember Canada, the US, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Belize all together, I picked another chunk of countries and focused on learning them. From there, you just repeat this process over and over again until you've learned every country in the region. Now this is where learning countries take some time. You have 
to space your learning out. If you retake the quiz every 10 minutes, you might make a lot of progress that day, but when you go to take the quiz again in another few days, you probably won't remember much. That's why I recommend practicing consistently either two or three days a week. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, okay, when you say you focus on learning a country's, what are you actually doing? Well, this is where you're gonna have to find learning tricks that work for you. One way to do this is through associations. For example, I associated Panama with the Panama Canal. I associated Guyana with the cult of Americans that drank poisoned Kool-Aid there. And if I didn't know anything about the country, I would skim their Wikipedia page until something stuck out to me, and then I would focus on memorizing that as a way to learn every country. For example, I didn't know anything about San Marino, but then I learned that they're basically a fortress nation on a mountain, and that helped me remember the country. This makes it easier to remember countries, and you're actually learning something about them, which is pretty cool. In my opinion, it's totally okay to associate a country with something that's completely unrelated to it if it helps you remember the country. For example, I remember the country Barbados by thinking of Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean. Those things are completely unrelated, but they help me remember the countries. Sometimes you'll have trouble spelling a country, like Kyrgyzstan. It took me so long to spell this country. In these cases, what I did was completely ignore the correct way the country was pronounced and instead made up a way that they were pronounced in my head that would help me remember how to spell them. For example, in my head, I didn't pronounce it Kyrgyzstan. I pronounced it Kyrgyzstan because that's the way it was spelled and that's what helped me remember it. Then after I had memorized all the countries, I was able to go back and remember it as Kyrgyzstan. Sometimes it can be easier to learn countries together as opposed to individually. At the end of the day, you you have to develop learning hacks that work for you. There is no good trick or bad trick in my book. If it works, it works. You can always go back after you've learned everything and erase all the bad associations or stereotypes or little tricks you use to remember a country. You'll know you've learned every country in a region when you're able to pass the quiz every time you take it with considerable ease. Once you've gotten to that point, you can move on to a quiz for another region. Now here's the important part. Once you've learned every country in a region, keep practicing them. Just because you know every country in North America doesn't mean when you start learning Europe, you should not test yourself on North America. This is extremely important for keeping all of the countries in your long-term memory, which is what you're going to need to have when you take the final quiz. Once you get more comfortable learning the countries, you can start to study multiple regions at once, but be aware that if you do this too early, it can really jumble stuff in your head and make it harder to learn them at the end of the day. Eventually, you'll get the hang of things though, and this process of learning countries will become very easy. Once you've mastered naming every country in every region of the world, it's time to move on to the final test. Eventually, you should be able to name every country in every region without much difficulty. If there are a few countries you're still stuck on, focus only on them for a few practice sessions until you can remember them just as easily as all the other countries. Yes, I'm talking about you, Timor-Leste and Brunei. At this point, you can take the countries of the world quiz. When you first start this quiz and the timer starts ticking, it can be very overwhelming. But take a breath, take your time, and go through the world region by region. If you miss a country or two in a region, keep going and come back to them once you finish the rest of the region. If you still can't get them, move on to the next region and come back to those countries at the very end of the quiz. You will get stuck or hung up on certain countries at times. That's just what happens when you're learning every country. Don't get frustrated, just focus on naming the countries you do know, and after the quiz, make a list of all the countries you missed and focus on practicing them. If you do all of this and follow the region by region approach, you should be able to successfully name every country on earth. As I mentioned before, I learned all the countries months ago and I still test myself on them every few weeks. Not only does this keep them in my long-term memory, but it has made me know them even better. I love knowing where all the countries are and how to spell all their names, but that's just the beginning. There's so much more you can learn about every country on earth. And with that being said, I'm Matt Shaver. I learned every country on earth and so can you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.